Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. And welcome back. So you've just heard the trailer for Anthropopagus. Ooh, that's right. Um, now, like I said at the start here, this movie is known by many, many names. Uh, just some of the ones that it's known by is obviously Anthropopagus. It's also known as Savage Island. It's known as The Beast. It's known as The Grim Reaper. If you were in the States, that's where you will know it from. Um, and like God knows how many other names... This one just seemed to acquire names, like a lot of um, genre movies from Italy at this time. Um, they would be released under many different names, usually released in the same place. Um, 
a couple of years later with a different name in order for the movies to be played again and to dip new people into going to see them. But yeah, that's that's uh, <laughs> that's just one of the many weird and interesting facts that surround this movie. Now, what I like to do on all these reviews, I like to give you the blurb from the 88 Films page. I think it's important that we do that. And we'll talk a little bit about some special features on the disc before we get into a, like a more in-detailed synopsis of what happens in the movie and then just my overall thoughts of it. So, on the 88 Films page, it says, perhaps the most notorious video nasty of all time. I kind of... Uh, I would have to dispute that 88 Films, but I know you're selling this one. Uh, Anthropopicus is back to deprave and corrupt a fresh wave of horror film viewers. Joe D'Amato cemented himself into the genre of film's history with this slickly directed and sinisterly suspenseful creature feature which has some unprepared tourists arriving on a desolate Mediterranean island only to find themselves stalked by a silent cannibalistic Neanderthal. Featuring gory special effects that convinced some British moral guardians that Anthropopicus was a legitimate snuff movie there is little doubting that this timeless terror totem holds up today. Also boasting a cast of genre legends such as Tisa Faro from Zombie Flesh Eaters, Zora Kerova uh, from Cannibal Ferox, and George Eastman, the mighty George Eastman from Rabid Dogs. 88 Films is proud to present Anthropopicus fully uncut and uncensored and remastered in 2K from the original 16mm uh, from ca uh, the camera negative. Special features vary depending on which version of this you have. So I got, I have actually both versions. Um, I'm not entirely sure why I have both versions at all. I think it's because I put into a Kickstarter for 88 films for four of the Italian titles they put out. And as a result of that, they sent me this as well because I bid at a certain pledge level. I want to assume that's right. So I have the one that was released as part of the actual 88 Films contingent, which has, uh, as its special features, the Italian opening and closing credits, theatrical trailer, as well as the 42 Street documentary, which, to be honest with you, is worth buying this disc flat out. Uh, not even for the, the film Anthropopagus, but just for owning the 42 Street um, documentary which I believe was put together by Cal Model who uh, does high rise, high rise productions uh, formerly worked for Arrow Video now is one of the kind of key masterminds behind the 88 films and their acquisitions of certain movies and they put out, I don't know if he's their main um, kind of point of contact for acquiring movies but he's certainly been a driving force behind this collection uh, in particular, and the slasher one as well. Um, however, if you own the special edition, which seems to be the one that has kind of replaced the previous one, it's certainly not the one that I watched for this one. I'm watching all the ones that have the Italian um, collection case numbers, etc. Uh, you get um, an additional thing with deleted scenes and the Eastman Chronicles, which is a 2017 interview with Luigi Montefiore, better known as George Eastman, so you get an interview with the man himself. Uh, I might actually check that out uh, before the next recording and feed back into that next recording to see um, if I personally feel that, you know, it's, it's worth getting that one or the previous one. I know that the this particular one that they're talking about here, which is the remastered special edition, costs a little bit more, costs you a couple of bucks more. So it's whether or not, I would imagine if it has an interview with George Eastman on it, it's probably worth paying the £4 extra. Uh, George Eastman's a, a wholly fascinating uh, guy who we have already briefly seen in Blast Fighter in the collection. He played the, the, the kind of older brother of the the miscreant that's causing so much trouble in town. Uh, an absolute towering giant. Um, his height has been described as anywhere from 6 foot 6 to 6 foot 9, uh, if you can believe it. And it will not be the last time we'll be covering them. I know that Absurd is also in the collection. Um, Absurd goes by the alias Anthropopicus 2, which is insane because it really has no relation to this movie at all, out with the fact that it is also 
written by and starring George Eastman, directed by Joe DeMille. The story couldn't be any different if it tried. I have a lot of time for that movie. I'm really looking forward to covering that as part of the collection. So yeah, so that's that's the, the E.T. films. Blurb. I will say that the, the master that I saw, which is not the remastered version... A bit grainy, but not bad at all. It's quite it's quite clean compared to the previous version I saw, which was a, a lesser quality rip, which I viewed to do my Doing the Nasties podcast uh, a couple of years ago, which was the... We went through the entire video nasty collection of movies, and the copy I saw wasn't great at all. It's kind of cool own, owning this in high def. And yeah, I might check out the special remaster as well. Just once again to give some context before the next recording. But certainly I want to keep it all in line with the order of when I bought these titles. So that's why I've done that one. So if we if we spin back out just for a wee second here. And I start to talk a little bit about what is actually going on in this movie. Before we, we kind of kick into my overall feelings of it. The plot itself is thin to say the least. Um, we start off with a German couple who are uh, holidaying or vacationing on uh, a Greek island um, and they are both butchered uh, in quite quite gory fashion. One of them is pulled under the water and we never see her again but the, the boyfriend who is wearing headphones and unable to hear his partner's cries takes a cleaver to the forehead. Uh, it's squishy is bloody, is fucking awesome. Um, and then we switch over. We have this group of people uh, who are once again on vacation and travelling between the Greek islands where they, they stumble upon this island, this particular island here. Um, and while they're there, they do a little bit of exploring. Um, they come across a, a woman in black, uh, which doesn't actually really amount to anything so that's crazy resident of the island um, they, while they're in a house they are attacked by a blind girl who jumps at a vat of blood wielding a giant fucking knife which once again is not really explained at all but that's fine that's fine she talks about this creature this beast that is on the island that smells of blood um, and then our our people are starting to get picked off one at a time by this cannibalistic, I, I know the description says cannibalistic Neanderthal, but he isn't a Neanderthal at first, he is, we get a bit of backstory for, for our killer who's played by George Eastman, essentially he, he, his wife and child all ended up marooned on a dinghy uh, in the middle of the ocean and when the boy died George Eastman decided that this would be a good time to maybe propose to his wife that they eat their child to survive. And the wife's having none of it and she throws herself in front of uh, George's knife, which goes into her and we are led to believe that he eats his wife and child and then ultimately ends up on this island. Uh, but by then he's he's gone a bit cray cray, um, has a taste for the human flesh and he's gone to the dark place. So... Um, He's the one that's hunting them down. Now, the movie doesn't really go much in the way of explanation why he has devolved as much as he has in his look. I think the assumption will be that because he is now eating human flesh, his body is transforming into something wholly primitive and primal, which I'm cool with, 100%. The makeup on him's not that great. His fake teeth are not that great. But the size of this guy and his awareness of where the camera is and his facial expressions are kind of fucking awesome and to be honest with you, the real reason that you want to check out this movie um, none of the characters are really three dimensional at all they're it's kind of ponderous actually while they're walking around the island uh, and not a lot's coming out but as soon as the as soon as the shit goes cray with Eastman in tow, that's when things get really interesting. He kind of stalks them all, picking them all off one at a time, um, which ultimately leads up to the sequence where our, our final girl, so to speak, is is you know she thinks she has killed him, 
but he has returned. He um, is stalking her and he takes a pickaxe to the chest. And then probably one of the most infamous scenes, um, particularly because it featured on the box artwork of uh, of any of the nasties, really, it was something like Driller Killer. We have this depiction of uh, Eastman's character on his knees, eating his intestines, which is essentially taken directly from this movie. That is what he ends up doing. He is on his knees uh, beside a well with his, his innards in his hands uh, and starts to eat them before he dies. Like one last cannibalistic sign of defiance in front of his, uh, in front of his assailants or in front of his uh, victims. And that's where the movie finishes. It's not a particularly long film at all. I think the, the total run time is in the region of about an hour and a half. Um, the first half of this movie treads water at a pretty slow pace, almost to the kind of pace that you might go under. Uh, whereas the second half of the movie picks up quite a bit of pace and the last... 10, 15 minutes of the movie are actually pretty fucking awesome. So, yes, yeah, so that's that's the, the synopsis. Some interesting information about the movie is, <coughs> obviously I mentioned it's directed by Joe D'Amato. Now, this guy here is a absolute fucking workhorse of a director. He sadly passed away in 1999. But up until that point, he, he had been uh, attached, whether in the directing chair, the production chair, or in the writing chair, with approximately about 200 movies, which is just fucking insane. Um, this movie in particular, the the Anthropopagus movie, is his first real foray into an all-out kind of horror movie. Before that, he'd been attached to a lot of um, sexploitation movies, um, and it, right out porn movies, he'd done a bit of porn. Um, back in the day when, when things were kind of slow. He, he'd done like work, when I say sex exploitation, think of things like the Emmanuel series of movies. He uh, was behind think, Emmanuel in Bangkok, Emmanuel in America, Emmanuel around the world, and Emmanuel and the Last Cannibals as well, which is a hugely inf influential movie that we spoke about when talking about the cannibal movies. In particular, it's one of those ones that kind of stands out um, it wasn't until he kind of swung in to do, uh, or put his stamp, so to speak, on Anthropopagus that really things start to get a bit more interesting. Now, he did do a bit of work with uh, Beyond the Darkness, which is another little movie that we'll be talking about as well, but that has a kind of sexual twi uh, kind of bent in it, which you know, kind of maybe sways away from being an out-and-out -out horror genre movie like this one in particular. So this is the one that kind of kicks him off and we get a slew of movies by him after this point where he is kind of comfortable that he's doing some horror. Kind of leans into it a bit more. He co-wrote this movie with uh, George Eastman. George Eastman obviously starring in the movie as the, the kind of titular killer. Uh, which kind of awesome. Uh, I think his name was Klaus Wortmann. Um, and like I say, a, a giant on screen presence. Uh, it's also worth saying as well that the, the scoring of the movie, the actual original soundtrack, was done by Marcelo Giambini. Um, and it's, it's heavily kind of synth based, which is kind of amazing. However, if you watch this movie in America, under the you know the, the title the Grim Reaper, then you will get a different score. And um, they actually, I believe the rumor is they stole the music from. Don't know if they stole the music. Probably licensed the music from the Fantastic Kingdom of the Spiders to play in the background. I'm not entirely sure why they would do that. To me, that seems kind of short sighted because the score for the Italian cut of the movie is kind of fucking awesome. So. Yeah, not entirely sure. Couldn't dig up anything in my kind of brief peripheral look online as to why they would do that. But yeah, there's a little factoid to put in your pipe and smoke. Um, so what do I think of the movie? Well, like I said, I think the first half of the movie, which is really kind of setting up the the characters being on the island, the, the plot points of like their boat going missing, etc., is, is quite slow. Uh, we're introduced to a couple of characters in particular where 
we could have used a bit more kind of fleshing out as to what's going on. The woman in the black outfit, I think, might either live with Eastman's character or she's maybe his sister. Um, and she adds nothing to this movie and commits suicide once again for no specific reason at all. Uh, the bling girl, there's no real proper explanation as to what's going on with her or how she ended up in this vat of blood with a stabby stab. Um, that's never really explained either, so that's kind of weird. Not entirely sure why that is. Um, there's no big explanation as to why Eastman has you know, transformed into a bit of a caveman out with this idea that he's eating human flesh. So yeah, there's some serious pacing issues uh, and really no likeable characters in this movie. That being said, the second half of the movie where, like, Eastman's presence is made when he attacks uh, one of our, one of our, um, our, uh, kind of group of characters and rips out his throat with his teeth the effects are fucking brilliant and from this point on it becomes this gnarly little kind of sta- uh, stock and slash affair uh, but with, with with cannibalism at its heart and I get really behind the movie at that point I find it far more interesting the score behind it is totally batty in points uh, and kind of adds to it and I, I mean it has this holy kind of Italian genre vibe permeating through the, the, the cinematography um, uh, and later on to you know um, like how the gore effects are actually placed out you know you see these effects in other movies of the same sort of time specifically the zombie stuff and the cannibal movies to which this movie comes out at maybe their height Eastman's phenomenal his presence is great I think he's He's captivating, and it's not just because of his his height, um, but yeah, it, it makes it makes such a difference to see him. Uh, Joe D'Amato claimed, and it's worth saying, this guy claimed a lot, and you have to take what he says with a pinch of salt. That uh, Anthropopagus was his lowest costing movie; it cost him less because he uh, filmed on sixty millimeter, which is obviously cheaper. Than filming it on thirty five mil uh, thirty five millimeter, um, so I think that's I think that's quite cool. I think obviously we we should touch on the the whole kind of video nasties thing. We already kind of touched on it with the night uh, train murders, but um, this one yeah it landed on the nasty list, which probably gave it its notoriety to the extent that it is just now. Um, it was banned in nineteen eighty four. This was on the bad list. This was on the, if you were given out this movie, you would be prosecuted and were prosecuted list. Um, you've got to imagine most of that kind of comes around um, the scene with the eating of intestines at the end. But I would say the box art does not help when you have a box art that looks like this. Specifically in that time period, you are just you're putting a giant red bullseye on your movie and daring the BBFC to come along and ban you. And we would be remiss if we don't take a couple of seconds to talk about you know one of the more infamous scenes in video nasty lore, which is um, a character I believe her name is Maggie is confronted by you know Eastman's killer at one point in the movie and her unborn child is torn from her womb uh, and devoured. So yeah, that's that's quite gnarly. And effects-wise, it doesn't really hold up all that great. That being said, at the time period, I imagine this warped people's brains. That You know, they, they hadn't seen anything like this before. It's a ballsy fucking move. And like I say, I think they handle it quite well. Um, for the time period, I, I genuinely think this would have been very effective. But yeah, that between that and the... the eating of intestines those two scenes are going to bump that up specifically and give uh, Mary Whitehouse and her cronies the opportunity to really hang their their disgust of these movies on um, which is you know ultimately the reason that it was it was banned in this country and on the the, the, the bad bad list of the video nasties 
Uh, yeah, so all in all, I think the movie it has qualities that I really like. I think, you know, it's a ridiculous Italian genre movie, which makes very little sense and doesn't even try to... I mean, it does try to an extent, but it's always fighting that losing battle of actually tying up loose ends, so why not just go absurd with it? Which is what they do, and when the movie lets its freak flag fly, so to speak, that's when I get excited. So the first half of the movie, all the setup is uh, is a bit ponderous and doesn't really lend itself to setting up any sort of atmosphere either, because it's, it's not really that sort of movie, although it's trying to, it doesn't achieve it. Um, the second half of the movie is bitching. I love it. I think the ending's nuts. Um, I think there's a couple of gnarly, gnarly scenes in here as well. Um, so if I was given it a grade, a Netflix grade, one through five, one is hated it, two is didn't like it, three is liked it, four is really liked it, and five is loved it, I would probably come in about a three and a half. Four at the top, I would feel comfortable doing a three and a half though. Uh, somewhere between I liked it and really liked it. Like I say, the first 40 minutes of the movie really are an anchor that you have to kind of slog through to get to that that juicy back half of the movie where anything goes. So yeah, there we go. That is my review of Anthropopicus, a.k.a. about a million other names.